Hello and welcome to a brief introduction to the research in my laboratory. As most of you know, our tissues are composed of very diverse cell types. And similarly, when we conduct experiments in the laboratory, for example, when we differentiate stem cells into different cell types, we generate fairly heterogeneous mixtures of different cell types. This is quite important, for example, in the context of directed stem cell differentiation. If we wanted to take this gray stem cell and convert it into a desired cell type, in this case here shown with blue, we typically find that doing this in the laboratory results in very many cells that uh, fail to differentiate into another cell type. It results in cells from different cell types and so on. And optimizing such directed differentiation protocols is usually very challenging and based on trial and error approaches. If we could make single cell measurements to uh, identify what are the signaling mechanisms resulting in those different branches, then we could use a more rational approach to either stimulate or inhibit different signaling pathways so that we can more efficiently generate the targeted cell type of interest as shown here. And furthermore, we can use those single cell measurements to estimate how accurate and how precise the differentiation protocol is. This type of experimental paradigms uh, has motivated a great interest in the development of single cell methods. And recently, single cell RNA sequencing has made tremendous progress in, in that direction. As useful as these RNA measurements are, however, they're not uh, sufficient to characterize what's going on in different cells. And as a particular example here, I point to the well-studied protein P53, the famous cancer tumor suppressor gene. And if we measure its abundance at the transcript level or the protein level across a cohort of cancer patients, we find that the correlation is rather poor. And if you see poor correlation between RNA and protein, you should always suspect that this is due to measurement error. In this case, this is not what's happening uh, because decades of extensive studies of P53 have demonstrated that the expression of P53 messenger RNA is constitutive, while the abundance of the P53 protein is mostly regulated by protein degradation. Therefore, we don't expect to have high correlation to begin with. And Similarly, when we took a much more comprehensive, unbiased, and systematic exploration for the abundance of proteins and RNAs across different human tissues, here on the right, as shown with this cartoon schematic, we found that generally RNA abundances can predict whether a gene is highly abundant or lowly abundant across all tissues, but RNA levels tend to be less uh, powerful in predicting how a particular gene, for example, gene 5, will be changing across different um, sets of, of human tissues. And this motivates the need to perform um, uh, not just RNA measurements, but also protein measurements. And usually such protein measurements are performed using antibody approaches, but they afford only limited specificity and they have allowed quantifying relatively few proteins per sample. So we were interested in developing mass spectrometry-based methods that can increase both the specificity and the throughput of quantification so that we might be able to specifically quantify many thousands of proteins across many thousands of single cells. Towards uh, and, and just as an illustration of uh, the low specificity of antibodies, I'll offer to you this uh, statistic uh, published recently in, in Nature, indicating that annually we spend over a billion dollars on purchasing antibodies with poor specificity. And this figure does not include money spent on following flawed hypotheses 
This is simply money spent on purchasing antibodies that do not have the specificity indicated on the label. To realize single cell protein analysis, we have, by mass spectrometry, we have developed both uh, experimental and computational approaches. Experimentally, we have developed new types of sample preparation that do not require detergents and that allow to both miniaturize the volume of sample preparation and fully automate it so that we can process thousands of single cells with limited batch effects and limited uh, amount of effort. We have developed the isobaric carrier concept that allows us to more efficiently uh, identify peptide sequences and reduce the losses. Uh, I will not explain the isobaric carrier concept here uh, due to lack of time, but uh, you can go to our YouTube channel as indicated here in red at the bottom and find many videos where uh, this concept is explained by us and others as part of uh, the conference that I organize or presentations that they have given for our work. Uh, I'll also mention that this type of approach requires substantial developments on the side of data analysis and interpretation. And my group has developed such tools. For example, a graduate student, Gray Huffman, developed uh, DUMS, which stands for Data Driven Optimization of Mass Spectrometry Methods. Uh, it's a set of tools that allows us to visualize data and determine optimal parameters for our analysis. Uh, similarly, we have developed methods such as DART AD that use Bayesian frameworks to incorporate additional information for peptide sequence, such as retention time to again uh, enable us to assign sequences to larger number of peptides. Uh, we have applied our uh, single cell proteomic methods to a variety of different systems. Uh, one particular uh, example that I'll mention here is understanding macrophage polarization. Macrophages are innate immune uh, cells that are present in all of your tissues. Uh, they're part of the uh, initial response that your immune system has. Uh, to various pathogens, they're part of regenerative processes, uh, and they can have very different phenotypes. They can either be pro-inflammatory, stimulate inflammation, or they can be anti-inflammatory. And those different phenotypes has major biomedical ramifications. For example, anti-inflammatory macrophages are sometimes known as tumor-associated macrophages that might prevent your immune system from effectively eliminating tumor cells. In my lab, we are also interested in uh, mechanisms of post-transcriptional regulation, and specifically, uh, we are very interested to understand how modifications of ribosomes can contribute to regulating uh, protein synthesis. This is a new and largely unexplored uh, mechanism for regulating translation of messenger RNAs. And we have focused on studying this mechanism also in the context of immune cells. And specifically, we have very exciting data looking at how ribosomes remodel and affect protein synthesis in the context of monocytes differentiating to macrophages. And in those model systems, we can isolate ribosomes uh, directly, physically, by using sucrose gradient sedimentation. As shown here on the bottom, this is a classical technique that allows to sediment different parts of the cell based on their size, based on how quickly they sediment in sucrose gradient, and then to analyze them as we have done downstream using mass spectrometry and other methods. Our work is uh, very collaborative. Here you can see uh, one picture of, of the team. Uh, uh, that we took uh, recently before the single cell proteomics conference that we organized in the summer. And we have been fortunate to be supported by many funders such as the NIH Directors Award, the Paul Allen Frontiers Group, as well as uh, local bi biopharmaceutical companies such as Sanofi, Merck, we are also supported by the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative and we are part of the Human uh, Protein Atlas. I hope this gives you 
uh, an overview of some of the research project going on in our group uh, that uh, are carried out by our team. And if you're interested in uh, learning more, you can visit our YouTube channel or our website and delve in, learn about uh, the research that keeps us excited.